In this tutorial we're going to take a look at lights inside Nuke. Now Nuke has three different types of light. Uh, it has a point light, a spotlight and a direct or what we might otherwise refer to as a parallel light. They all support shadow casting and they can all be created either inside Nuke or they can be imported from, uh, using an FBX file format uh, from a CGI program such as Maya. So I have a scene open as you can see and within this scene we've got several pieces of geometry each with a, a texture applied. Um, we have a scene node here, I'll just, I'll just zoom in a little bit into the, uh, into the node graph. We've got a scene, a scene node which is connecting all these pieces of geometry together. Um, and the, the scene node in itself is connected to the scanline renderer which allows us to view this scene in a two-dimensional environment. You can see the view is currently set to 2D. We also have a camera in the scene which allows us to frame the geometry. You'll notice that uh, there are no lights currently in this scene. Uh, however, we do see illumination within our 2D environment and that's because when there are no lights within the scene Nuke provides a flat lighting model which means that the actual RGB value of the applied textures which in this case are linked to the geometry up here uh, are preserved within the render. So if we just switch into 3D view here and we just sort of uh, come out to frame this image we can see the relationship between the objects and the camera and we can see the flat lighting system in here. Essentially whenever we add a light the lighting model that Nuke is currently using switches to an 18 uh, an 18 percent diffuse shading model so we'll take a look at what that looks like so if we open the tools the 3D tools we can see that we, these are all our 3D uh, all our 3D nodes are in here we want to come into the light submenu and we want to put in a light we'll start with the point light so I'll put that in the scene and we can see something sort of slightly strange happening straight away uh, First of all, the light is landing at the at the world space origin, which in this case throws everything into darkness. So if we select this light and pull it up and back and maybe across a little bit, somewhere close, we can also alt and right, right click and drag around to sort of move around the scene to get an idea about where our uh, where our light is in relation to the camera and in relation to the scene generally. Okay, we can now change our viewer to look at this scene through the through the eyes of the camera and lock that into position and we can start to see some kind of effect of that light uh, on the on the geometry but it's currently a little bit grim so what we'll do is we'll take our point light and we'll just bring up the intensity and we can see that intensity uh, interacting straight away with the light in in the scene You notice also within these um, within these properties that we can uh, that we can affect the color. So, for example, if we wanted to uh, change the color and the tonality of the light or the color of the light, then uh, then we can do that using this uh, using this color swatch. But we'll uh, we won't go there right now. What we can also see, although it's slightly difficult within the uh, within the current interface, but we can see that uh, what I'll do actually is I'll keep my node tree at this kind of scale and I'll scroll down we can see that all the translation and rotation properties for this light are actually in here so we can make minor adjustments and we'll come back to that in a second what I want to do first is I want to just switch into 2D view and we can see that we've gone back to our flat default lighting system and this is because we haven't yet connected the light to the scene so if we do that now and hook this up to the scene we can see that light affecting. So effectively what's happening now is that this light is now being computed through the scanline renderer which is essentially our gateway to the 2D view. So the uh, the scanline, scanline renderer is now computing the properties of the light within the overall sort of scene. So in theory now even though we're looking at this in 2D view if we now start to make some changes to the properties of the light for example the translation if we start to if we start to move this light around we can see the light coming across there and we can see that this, the interaction that that is having on the geometry within the scene uh, that's on the x parameter let's just move up and down on the y and we can see the light casting as it moves around the world space 
OK, so that's the point light. What I'm going to do is delete that and switch back to the 3D view. Um, I'm also going to switch back to the default uh, the default sort of viewing uh, viewing setup so that we can see this. And what we'll do now is that we'll add a direct light into the scene. Again, come into our 3D tools, into the lights, and here is our direct light. So we'll put that in. Again, we have the same effect. It locks itself into zero world space, so we need to kind of bring it up and uh, and back a little bit. Again, I'm just trying to aim it somewhere in the in the in the area where the camera exists. Okay, I'll just spin around so that we can actually see the graphic that's associated with the direct light. You should think of a direct light as similar to the sun, sort of a powerful light, but a great distance away. It's actually a parallel light, which means that its position in the scene is irrelevant, only its rotation angle. So if we get into our properties and we come down here, you can see that there's absolutely no point changing this, uh, the, these translation settings. I've only just moved it up really so that we can actually see, uh, we can actually see it as distinctive from in, in the actual viewing area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the rotation tools. Again, I could use the I could use the rotation parameters here. Alternatively, I can use the control to switch to my um, to switch to my gizmo and spin around and, and down, etc. And 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 generally just sort of move it into into position. You can see the effect that that's having on the uh, on on the parameters. I can also use Alt to move around just to see that whether the um, whether it's generally looking in the, broadly in the direction of of my scene, which it is. I'll just drag it up a little bit, and again, I'll lock my view onto the camera just by doing this, so that I can actually see it from the camera's perspective, and then we can actually see the effects of the direct light. And again, it's looking a bit gloomy, but we can bring up the intensity so that we can actually see. The effect of this light within the scene. Again, we've got the color property that we can uh, that we can adjust. However, if we switch to the 2D view, we will have the same issue as before. We just go back to our default flat lighting system, and again, it's because our direct light isn't yet connected to the scene. As soon as that's connected to the scene, then we can um, then we actually see that this uh, being computed through the scanline renderer, and we can now come back to our properties. Again, remember that this is a direct light. Moving it in, move, translating it won't have any effect, uh, only rotating it. But hopefully, we should see as I pull this around, we can see there that moving moving it across using the uh, using the Y parameter, we can see that light casting differently across the across the geometry. Uh, I should see a similar effect if I rotate on X, which is essentially moving the light source up and down. And there we go. So that's kind of like the effect of a, of a direct light, kind of light that you would use to, to illuminate a world space. OK, so I'll delete this light and again switch back to my 3D view and switch back to the default viewing space and just again renegotiate my scene. And we'll bring in another light. This time we'll, we'll try the spotlight. Here we go. Again, as expected. It's docking in zero world space. So again, we'll just bring it back and put it somewhere in this area. Just move around to get it uh, so we can actually see it in relation to the camera and in relation to the objects. So with the spotlight, the, uh, the position and the angle are, are in play uh, and, they will, and they will collectively affect the scene, scene illumination. We also have an additional feature with the spotlight which relates to the cone angle and we'll be looking at that shortly. So what, what I want to do at the, at the, in the first instance is just make, make some changes to, these, um, to, to, the, to the angle and the position of the spotlight so that it's looking roughly at our scene. And I'm just going to rough this out initially. Um, well, I'll, let's say that I'm happy enough. I'll just, I'll just bring these into all integers so that we can uh, Maybe maybe six something like that, so that that our translation is locked on, and we'll say that we're happy with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rough out the um, the the rotation of the of the light, and sort of try and bring it down so it's looking somewhere like at our scene, and maybe just come across so we can actually see it, and then make some changes to the other way, 
and so it's somewhere like pointing at our scene okay so that's a that's a good way to actually sort of rough it out however uh, when we're using the spotlight we usually need to be a little bit more precise than this now Nuke provides us with a useful feature for actually doing this whereas it, it allows us to actually look at the scene from the spotlight's perspective so we can do that, we can click the spotlight's perspective and lock onto it now we're actually seeing this scene as the light seeing the scene so we can come into our, uh, we can come back to our tools now and we can start to position them and I'm just going to broadly position this and sort of centre the spotlight on the on the scene so it's kind of looking straight down the middle of the scene some something like that so kind of like spotlights looking at the whole thing okay so the good thing about this, this this little feature is that it means that we're looking from the spotlights perspective so we can get a pretty precise lock onto the objects that we want to illuminate and once we've done that we can switch now switch now to the camera's perspective and we can see the effect of that light on the geometry from the now but now from the camera's perspective again I'm just going to bring the intensity up somewhere around about here we can start to see something a little bit different going on around the uh, around the boundaries of this scene which is essentially being dictated by the fall off and we're going to look at that now so I think we'll get a better view of this if we switch to the 2D view and hook up our spotlight to the, uh, to, the, to the scene. We can see some very hard angles in, in here and this has been caused by the cone angle. Just to demonstrate that I'm going to bring the cone angle down. You can see what's happening here. So this is essentially the unique characteristic of this particular light. So by bringing that, uh, bring, by bringing the cone angle down like this, some of our uh, geometry appears to be disappearing. Of course, it's not disappearing. Um, currently, we have absolutely no softness um, to the outer edge of the fall-off area, um, and we have a light range uh, essentially of 100% hard light. Uh, therefore, these areas of the geometry are act actually outside the boundaries of the light range, and therefore they're totally unlit. So what we what we also need to look at is we need to look at the fall off, which is essentially the softness of the air, of the boundary of the light where the where the light and the dark come together. And we've got two ways that we can do that within um, within this particular node, and the, these are determined by these parameters. First one we want to look at is this cone penumbra angle, and if you take a look at this as I adjust it, what this actually does is it it determines the softness of the light's outer edge. So you can see that as we scrub the areas of the unlit, uh, or the unlit parts of the geometry therefore become partially revealed as we do that. So we're just really dealing with the softness of the outer edge of this light. So I'll just extend the penumbra and then reduce in the cone angle and you can see the effect of that and also if we now start to make some alterations to the uh, uh, to the to the position and angle of the of the light itself you can see how this dynamically affects the three dimensional objects okay so in addition to the penumbra we also have the cone fall off And what this does is it determines um, how much the spotlight diminishes from the center of the circular region to the out to the, to the out towards the edge. So essentially, the higher the value, the more focused the light, and the and and the fall the fall off is independent of this uh, of of the type. This is these are. Uh, algorithms which determine the way that the light falls off uh, but irrespective even if nothing's nothing selected there this will still operate so essentially the 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 higher the value the more focused the light so you can see how I can bring that in I can maybe bring the penumbra back a little bit increase the cone angle and so on so I and and essentially the way that we um, that we achieve the desired fall off in Nuke is generally through a combination of these three properties the angle the penumbra and the fall off okay so I'm just going to switch back to 3d and back to the default and get rid of this spotlight and we'll just look at one more light which interestingly enough 
is called light. Again, it's um, it's going to dock itself into zero world space. So I'm just going to bring it, bring it up and out, spin round and pull it back, and we'll take a look at this. Now there's no need to configure this to, to explain it. Um, this is basically a utility light that allows us to use it either as a point light, a directional or a spotlight. So essentially all the three lights that we've already looked at we can determine from within this one place. And essentially as you can see if I just pull down, pull this down so we can see all the properties depending on which light type we have selected the, the, various, um, the various parameters become active. So for example direction we have the intensity and the color but the cone the cone uh, elements are are hidden uh, but when we come down to spotlight these then become active and selectable and animatable so why would why do we need this i mean obviously it's a it's got it's it's got more functionality um but with that become, comes a ho an overhead that new caster process so i guess that's the reason why new new don't provide this light and just this light um, so I guess that therefore we have to say well what's the point of it and I think the short answer to that is that if you know right from the outset which type of light you're going to need then there is no there is no point to it there is no reason to use it but on some occasions you may not be certain which light type will be best until you've got it positioned angled and interacting with the scene objects and that could be quite a complex arrangement that could be quite a complex setup in terms of your translation and rotation it could involve expressions linking to various things for example linking a light to a camera so that the light follows the camera as the camera moves it could be quite a complex configuration and if you've gone through gone to the trouble of actually setting that up using a point light and then decided that a spotlight would have been better you've then got to repeat that process so i guess the advantage of this particular light is that it allows you to change it on the fly so you could have gone to the trouble of getting it all set up and configured but then if you decide that maybe you want to experiment with different lights in order to get the best look then you can just change your light type, light type without having to delete it re in insert a different light and then go through the problem of configuring again so I guess that's the purpose of this light so that's a little bit of a cook's tour of the lights and how to configure them and how to set them up inside Nuke hope you found that useful